Hello and welcome to our session on the ATI Boeing Accelerator. My name is Noor E. I'm the Programme Lead from the Aerospace Technology Institute, the ATI. Today we're going to spend some time telling you a little bit more about our programme. We'll introduce you to the nine fantastic startups who took part in Cohort 1. And we'll also introduce you to our programme sponsors, Boeing Horizon X and GKN Aerospace. Here at the ATI, our primary aim is to support technology development in the UK aerospace sector. Around a year ago, we identified a gap in supporting younger companies and startups in this space. In that time, the ATI, along with our sponsors, have developed this programme with three primary objectives. First and foremost is to support those early stage companies develop their technologies in aerospace. Secondly, the companies that we bring into our programme to find commercial opportunities for them with our sponsors. Finally, what we wanted to do is develop an ecosystem of innovation, bringing together corporates, startups, investors, experts and academics into the same space. So today we have pitches from all nine of the startups from Cohort 1 and it's an opportunity for them to showcase the technologies and capabilities that they've been working on in the past few months. So my ask for today is to listen to the pitches with an open mind and really watch out for that light bulb moment. If in the next hour or so you've got an idea to collaborate or work with anyone that you hear, uh, please do get in touch with us. I'll now hand over to Gabby, who's gonna tell you a little bit more about our programme and introduce you to the nine founders from the startups in Cohort 1. Thank you, Noor. Hi, I'm Gabby, and I'm the program director of the ATI Boeing Accelerator. When we started looking for startups for this program last year, we were truly overwhelmed by the response we got. The first cohort themes were Industry 4 and Sustainability, and we had 268 applications from 37 different countries. And those applications were great. Although it was hard, we managed to narrow it down to the nine best ones. Those nine startups spent almost 12 weeks with us in London. They got access to our incredible sponsors, Boeing and GKN Aerospace. They also received mentoring and a tailored curriculum to help them improve and scale their businesses. Then we opened up our aerospace networks and introduced them to different aerospace players and we supported their fundraising efforts by putting them in front of more and new investors. We also had Minister Zahari visit our offices um, during a launch event, and we traveled to Filton to see the GKN site. Unfortunately, the in-person program was cut a little short due to COVID, but we extended our support to the companies and are still working very closely with those that need it. I personally, have been really impressed with our founders. Not only because of the incredible talent and drive that they've demonstrated over the course of the program, but also because of their resilience in this really difficult time. Multiple teams have actively contributed to the UK's COVID response. And I truly believe that companies like our nine and startups are the future of the aerospace industry. Soon, we will be announcing more details and we'll be opening applications for Cohort 2. But until then, I am very excited to introduce you to all nine teams, together with the rest of the program team, Will and Xenia. If, at any point, you want to get in touch with any of the founders, please follow the portfolio link that is in the video description. Next up, we have Doug from Circulo. Circulo is all about traceability. The team started in the automotive industry to prove that they can handle complex supply chains and they can track material as it changes state. They're currently on the Mayor of London Growth Programme and they work together with clients like Volvo and Daimler in automotive. Circular is now ready to also tackle the traceability challenge in industrial supply chains in aerospace. Meet Doug from Circular. Hello, my name is Doug Johnson-Pernsgen and I'm co-founder and chief exec 
of Circular. We are a London-based technology business, approximately three years old, um, and our business is traceability in industrial supply chains. We track raw materials from their source all the way through the process of refining and manufacture into sub-assemblies, into finished products like cars. Um, we've been working with car manufacturers like Daimler and Volvo Cars uh, to track the raw materials in their uh, electric vehicle batteries, materials like cobalt and lithium uh, that come with concerns about uh, responsible sourcing, such as child labour and environmental damage. Um, and having built up an approach to an effective chain of custody of materials through a supply chain, we're now starting to help with the dynamic attribution of carbon um, accumulated through the supply chain all the way um, to the end product as part of um, the wider sustainability agenda of manufacturers to achieve net zero. We use a combination of technologies such as blockchain and machine learning to create a reliable digital thread that follows a material from its source, which could be recycled, or it could be from somewhere like a mine site, all the way through the supply chain, um, from, from the processes of refining into component manufacture into sub-assemblies. Um, we do this by connecting, if you like, the input ingredients at a particular step to the output product multiple times through the supply chain. When you have that reliable chain of custody, you can obviously attribute other data to it, such as, for example, the embedded carbon from each step along the journey. Um, to date, um, we have been self-funded. Um, we've recently closed an investment round. Um, our management team is highly experienced. Um, we have a team now of about 20 to 25 people um, in uh, both the UK and Germany, um, and a small team in South Africa. Um, we serve clients all over the world. Um, and uh, our leadership team has, between them, worked in both enterprise technology uh, as well as successfully starting and exiting businesses like the one that we're now doing, um, all the way through into very large corporates where we've sat on the other side of the table. Over the last six months or so, we've been working as part of the ATI Boeing Accelerator um, with both Boeing and GKN Aerospace to see how the lessons that we've learnt in auto manufacturer um, can read across into the sustainability agenda um, that exists within aerospace uh, and is increasingly growing in prominence. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Ksenia and I'm the program associate at the ATI Boeing Accelerator. Up next is Authentize. Andre and the team started out at Singularity University in 2012, and the team is now spread out across the globe in the US and Europe. Andre is a TEDx speaker and he has also delivered over 100 digital manufacturing talks. He'll be sharing more about their automation software platform and the future of additive manufacturing. Hi there, I'm Andre. I'm the Chair for Digital Manufacturing at Singularity University, and together with FAR, I run Authentize. Between us, we have about 25 years' experience in the sector and a big team supporting us, but it was actually my previous job running a venture capital company in Nigeria that helped me understand the need for this company. And back then, a plane crashed, 159 people died because it takes a minimum of three days to get a spare part into the country. Um, we decided then to resolve that supply chain issue, which is really an issue around agility in manufacturing. And to do that, we built a platform that allows additive orders to be tracked all the way from order entry and quoting to shipment. In that tool, you can review 2D and 3D components. Um, uh, and you can look at quotes, generate quotes and, and export them automatically. You can integrate with CAD systems so you sync bidirectionally or generate workflows and work instructions so that you can determine exactly how the order should be fulfilled. You're also able to manually or automatically uh, schedule objects. That ties into machine data so that parts are automatically tracked as they go through the process. And in the cases where that's not possible, we have an app uh, where manual operations can be tracked and, and, and issued. You're also able to trace your material history with this tool and um, can see the record of every single part built uh, in, into the finite, most finite detail. You're also able to use that data and drive high level analytics of your, uh, of your build and tie that data uh, directly into your existing IT systems or um, use no-code platforms like Microsoft Flow to uh, manipulate the data even further. 
companies love working with us because we are an open system. That means that third-party components can be built in at any part of the workflow. For example, mesh healing, in-process monitoring, geometric search, and we can tie in machine data. So you're able to uh, actually use or track what's happening in the machine and use that data to automate your processes. In fact, Boeing was able to use that system to reduce a, a process that used to take them five days to just 10 minutes. And it's not just Boeing. There are a variety of other uh, aerospace companies like um, suppliers such as Centavia and Ehrlichon. Um, but we're also working with the uh, automotive industry, with the medical industries and gaining a lot of experience throughout. And really what that is telling us today is that we have a really valuable tool at our hands, not only to make the process more efficient, but also to capture contextual data. And that contextual data can be used in a variety of other ways. For example, in managing your supply chain. So you can see what uh, availability is like, what spare capacity is, where your part is, a real-time quality report, and so forth. So I hope you will contact us today to understand not only how you can benefit from operational efficiency, but also from the contextual data that we can generate. Hi, I'm Will, and I'm the Venture and Ecosystem Director at the ATI Boeing Accelerator. We first met Anomalous co-founders Matt and Ewan while we were on our scouting roadshow as we prepared for Cohort 1. We were immediately impressed by the small and passionate team with an extensive track record in aerospace. They're currently rebranding um, with a bit of a refocus on the product side as well. So here's Ewan to tell you more. Hello, my name is Ewan Walewski. I'm the CEO and founder of Filament, a collaborative computing platform for engineers and scientists. If like me, you're an engineer or a scientist that has been part of a team working on solving a complex technical problem, then this graphic probably brings, brings back some painful memories. Documentation is separate from data and analysis. Multiple versions of documents are stored on local drives and then emailed between team members. And then finally, all the knowledge that is created is reduced to a single PDF that fundamentally limits the ability of others to build on that knowledge by making it impossible to extract data and analysis. As crazy as it seems, in 2020, this is the process of knowledge creation, documentation and management for the vast majority of engineers and scientists. At Filament, we are changing this by providing engineers and scientists with a single collaborative workspace where they can conduct analysis, store data and share their technical knowledge. At the core of our product is a new type of document that combines text, data and analysis, all in the same document. Code-based analysis is embedded directly into the document and can be run and can be run live in a fully reproducible compute environment, which can then be shared with the rest of your team. Our product is cloud-based and runs in the web browser, so it can be used on any device from any location, making it easy for technical teams to work remotely. At Filament, we believe that engineering and science should be collaborative, so we've built collaboration tools into every part of our product. You can collaboratively edit documents in real time with your team, both text and code, while all your work is kept safe with automatic version and access control. Once you've completed your analysis, we make it easy to publish your work, allowing you to share it with your team and create a true knowledge base that others can build on. Filament is built by engineers and scientists for engineers and scientists. Our founding team have advanced degrees in engineering from the world's leading universities and have decades worth of experience conducting research and developing new technologies. We've won multiple awards, including Best Startup at the Smart Factory Expo, and we were selected to be part of the inaugural ATI Boeing Accelerator Programme, where we've had the opportunity to engage with stakeholders from across the aerospace industry. We're already working with some of the biggest engineering companies in the world and would love the opportunity to speak with you about how Filament can improve collaboration in your technical teams and create a true technical knowledge base for your company. Thank you for your time and please feel free to contact us for further information. We first met the next team, Kraken IM, in 2017. I remember one of the first things Ian said to me, information management is my jam. Since then, Ian and Jordan have proven real grit and resilience. The founders have big clients in oil and gas and are now coming into aerospace to provide solutions that give you data you can trust. Ian's pitch is always a highlight, so I hope you're ready to find out more about Kraken IM.
Hi everyone, it's me, Ian, from Crack and IM, and I'd like to talk to you today about supplier information. In numerous sectors, collecting information from your supply chain is vital to you, and you need trust in the data that comes from your suppliers, and your customers need to trust it too. Information such as engineering data, supplier quality assurance, materials data, are increasingly becoming digital. And you need to answer questions, questions such as, how do I safeguard requirements traceability from engineering and design through procurement into use and create a digital thread? Do I know the trustworthiness of data that comes from the data supply chain and who signed it off? And how do I stop data entering my critical business processes that I can't prove was unaltered? But most importantly, is the thing that I specified the same thing that I actually got? If we want digital supply chains, then we need digital tools. So what does Kraken do? Well, we reduce the cost of capturing supplier information by making it digital. We bring low cost traceability of that data through your whole supply chain and we enforce clear standards. We improve sustainability by giving you the right information from the point of purchase through to the end of life. And then we ensure you can trust it all using distributed ledger technology. So those are the benefits we bring, but how do we do it? Well, we have two tools on one platform and they ensure data you can trust from your supply chains, leveling the playing field for all of your suppliers. The first tool is Phoenix. Phoenix is about requirements reimagined. It provides a simple method for the information supply chain to see and download their requirements, understand expectations, and allows you to define exact information needs to the suppliers and sub-suppliers in a digital format. It drives standardization down through the layers of the supply chain. If Phoenix is all about the question, then Halcyon is all about the answer. The second tool, Halcyon, is a data collaboration platform that ensures that the right data is delivered at the right time. It provides all stakeholders with a hub to supply, validate, and approve engineering and quality data, provides an immutable record of that data using blockchain before it feeds into your various different systems. It captures granular information and improves collaboration, trust, and traceability. So where have we come from? Well, we made our start in oil and gas. We've worked on projects from Texas to Taipei for some of the world's largest companies, but we soon realized that many sectors face similar challenges. And where we're going is even more exciting. We're making the humble contra taking the humble contract and we're making it smart. We've started tying things we can measure digitally to things in the real world. And we're doing this by building smart contract clauses around supply of data in plain language and then tying them to digital requirements, meaning that your supplied part will have a digital passport of its information from the very beginning. The benefits are potentially huge. Greater contractual agility, cost and efficiency savings by removal of multiple steps of contract execution, drafting and negotiation, and it lets you track and reward sustainability directly in your contracts. But most of all, it can give your suppliers a contractual carrot to do things that you want them to do. So, if you think your supply chain could use a, do a, tro a dose of trust and reliability right now, then we can help. Thank you. Intelligence are a spin out from the University of Cambridge, using machine learning to help design advanced materials faster than ever before. They're working with NASA to trial their Alchemite software, and they have many other exciting projects in the pipeline. During the COVID-19 pandemic, they've been developing their technology to identify future cases of the virus. Hi everyone, my name is Ben and I'm CEO of Intelligence and I'd like to tell you about how we are working on digitising material and chemical optimizations. Within material design problems, we are always trying to understand how we go from raw ingredients and treatment processes to a set of desired target properties. As shown here, on the left, we have our raw ingredients elements in a material or molecules in a chemical. Then we have the processes applied. How are the ingredients combined? What temperatures or pressures are used? And finally, on the right, the output, the physical characteristics we are trying to achieve. Achieving these targets efficiently is a common problem and applies to a wide range of domains, such as alloys, lubricants, batteries, plastics, etc. Currently, this process is performed through scientific research and experimental validation. This has a few problems. Firstly, it is an iterative process. Experimental cycles can be expensive or they can take a very long time, e.g. fatigue testing. 
Secondly, the current process is expert driven, meaning the design and method is based on some particular experience or specialisms. And finally, data. To move to a data driven approach or an AI approach, we need good quality data. However, the very nature of R&D means data can be limited, noisy and expensive to acquire. Our solution, Alchemite, uses a unique machine learning approach to extract maximum knowledge from all the available data. Models produced can be used to run digital or virtual experiments in seconds. We can run optimizations to design the best performant materials possible. We can identify errors or outliers in experimental data for further investigation and also provide a smart design of experiments tool for really speeding up that design process. These features can enable an 80% reduction in the number of experiments needed. The ability to design for multiple target properties simultaneously, a reduction in material or environmental impact due to toxic or costly components, and more importantly, a data-driven, transparent and repeatable design process across an organisation. This approach was first developed with Rolls-Royce to try and design a new nickel-based superalloy for use in their jet engines. An alloy was needed with 14 physical targets, survive high temperatures, not oxidise or corrode, must be strong, light, cheap, etc. A model was created from limited experimental data and a new alloy was proposed that achieved these 14 target properties. This alloy has been experimentally verified and patented and the whole project took around 18 months significantly quicker than the typical 10 to 15 years, saving millions in R&D costs. Intelligence was founded by myself and Dr. Gareth Conduit in 2017. The team is currently comprised of 11 scientists, engineers, and now commercial members. A number of projects are underway with large-scale R&D organizations in aerospace, chemicals, and drugs. And through the ATI Boeing Accelerator, we have made huge gains in establishing relationships with new aerospace customers. I hope this gives you an idea of how we are transforming material and chemical design. And please do get in touch if you would like to know more. Thank you. The Gravity Sketch team are the second startup on Cohort 1 who built their business in the automotive sector. It's been really inspiring watching Shay, Daniela and the rest of the team build and scale their intuitive 3D design platform during the time that we've worked with them. Here's Shay, co-founder and CEO, to share what they've been up to. My name is Shay Sosanya, co-founder and CEO of Gravity Sketch. Gravity Sketch is a 3D design platform for designers and engineers to collaborate in real time in virtual reality. The current production process for anything from a vehicle to the interior of an aircraft requires a lot of back and forth between various teams in design, engineering, marketing, and the huge challenge here is moving from something that we see on pen and paper, so a rough sketch, into a 3D digital model and then finally into the final production. This is a very costly and timely process and often a lot of compromises are made to get to the final product. Since we already think in 3D, we should also be creating in 3D from the very beginning of the design process. With Gravity Sketch, this process is actually possible. Gravity Sketch has real-time tools, meaning that you can collaborate in real time with your colleagues, but also edit and update the, the physical or the digital model actually in real time. It's cross-platform, so you can use it across the web browser as well as virtual reality and your desktop computer. It's also intuitive. We've proven that we can take a user with no Gravity Sketch or no 3D experience through the experience in about eight hours and they're fully capable to use our product and tool. It's also collaborative, of course, so you can connect with your team that may be in another country or even another area of the city in real time in the immersive environment experience. We've proven that Gravity Sketch can be deployed for exteriors of vehicle design. So we've had great success in the automotive industry, helping reduce some of their cycles from four months to four weeks. And this is purely through the collaboration, peer-to-peer, -peer, working from the very beginning of the design stage all the way through to rough prototypes before they go into production. This is the pre-production phase. Through that process, we've projected that we can save per vehicle 40 million in design and engineering costs. We're a diverse team of engineers and designers who are very passionate about this challenge that we're trying to address. And we have background in industries ranging from automotive, but also game design and game development, allowing us to develop a truly real-time 
collaborative experience. Our goal and our vision is to create an ecosystem where we have products that can fit at various stages of the design development process with a cloud hub that allows everything to connect in real time and the data can flow seamlessly. In the aerospace industry, we see our strongest value in interior design and also engineering and product reviews. Being able to bring in your models, review your models, annotate, share, and have a very clear communication from anywhere in the world in real time with your teams. We hope that you can take a look at Gravity Sketch and come talk to us at some point. We'd be happy to set you up with a trial. Thank you very much. The next startup is on its way to solve another huge problem. Counterfeit goods and components are threatening safety, brands, and sustainability. This is how and why Subtilian Technologies started. The team has so far been operating in various sectors like banking, electronic manufacturing, retail packaging, and pharma distribution. And they are now coming into the aerospace industry. We really enjoyed working with David, Aubrey, and Craig. And David will now tell you more about Subtilian Technologies. Hi, I'm David Langworth, and I'm Senior Investor and Chairman of Septillion Technologies Limited. What do we do? We built and patented a unique solution for authentication and provenance, reducing costs within the supply chain. We all hear horrendous statistics on the level of infiltration of fake goods. So, by way of example, do you know if the aspirin that you're taking is genuine? Is it possible that you're a passenger on a plane in which unauthorised parts could have entered its spare supply chain? And if you believe that aviation supply chains are secure, then how much extra are those supply chains costing because of direct sourcing of components rather than going by distributors? Supposing the component's provenance could be assured without going direct, how much could you save you and your client? So what's our solution? We developed fibre code. Tiny fibres are added to the pulp of paper or card at the time of their manufacture, or added in other substrates. If you look at your passport with a UV light, then you'll see them already, but they're not used in the way that we do. So what does it look like? The fibres solidify into a totally random 3D scatter. Using UV light and simple machine vision techniques, our non-simple algorithm converts the 3D scatter of fibres within an area of interest into a unique code. What's great is that it means we have one-way encryption. You have to have the original item or label or packet to generate the same code again. You can't reverse engineer it and you can't copy it. So let's see it in action. Let's take four boxes that are identical other than the hidden fibers in the blank labels and we'll place a card in just one. Now we'll enroll that unique fiber code and let's shuffle the pack. And now, just that one fiber code is the one that's valid. So imagine how this could be used in a blockchain transaction. And imagine if the reel of electronic components, the circuit board, the box, the packaging, has paper with fiber included. Each would be enrolled with us and serialized by the client's ERP. And so then at each transaction point, the client's blockchain would check the digital to digital transaction details, but we'll say, and it's still the original item, and so the OEM's commitment will be locked in. We connect the physical to the digital. If you'd like to know more, please get in touch. Thank you. Jean and Anorak met an entrepreneur first in 2019, and although they're slightly more early stage than the other teams on the program, they've impressed us with their focus, hard work, and the impact they want to make on the aerospace industry. They are redefining the document-driven integration approach using their software. I'm delighted to introduce Sean to tell you more about Perpetual Labs and their journey so far. Hi, my name is Gian Maria Bullegas and I am the CEO and co-founder of Perpetual Labs. I'm really excited to show you what we've been working on, but first let me introduce the team. We are computer scientists and engineers. We graduated from the likes of Imperial College and Oxford University. And 
Once our peers went to work for Facebook and Goldman Sachs, somehow we could not really resign ourselves to the fact that the only use for our engineering skills was to maximize advertisement revenue. So we started Perpetual Labs. But what's the challenge that we're trying to address? Well, over the last 50 years, the world has seen incredible innovation in computing and information technology. By comparison, the world of physical engineering has been lacking behind. The air travel has been the same since the 70s, and we haven't been to the moon since the days of the Apollo program. At the same time, our generation is faced with an unprecedented environmental crisis, which the current generation of energy and transportation technology are not able to address. So what's the problem here? Well, the problem is complexity. Complexity is a really tough beast because while our machines and systems become more complicated, the time, the cost, and the risk associated with the development of this machine grows exponentially. That is the reason why innovative technologies today are locked behind a wall of development costs and regulatory constraints. As you can imagine, this is a big problem and a lot of people are working on it. So what's special about what we are doing? Well, we are developing a virtual prototyping platform for cyber physical systems called Cypher. Cypher uses linked data and semantic search technology. In other words, the same technology that we use today to serve the web to make engineering, engineering information organized and highly available across different engineering disciplines and business functions. Cypher also supports an innovative digital twinning technology with full system simulation capability. This is powered by our proprietary machine learning bridge technology. This digital twin, this behavioral model, becomes the single source of truth throughout the development process and allows continuous design integration. Cypher also implements an innovative data hub architecture. This allows cloud-based collaboration across multiple stakeholders while enabling each stakeholder to be in full control of their data and IP at all time. This is extremely important because it addresses one of the main concerns of the aerospace industry against the adoption of cloud-based technology. The combination of this cloud-based architecture with digital twinning and machine learning bridge technology means that for the first time, we can allow true model-based collaboration and design reusability across the extended enterprise. These in turn translate in a huge saving in terms of time and cost necessary for the development of complex cyber physical systems, and most importantly, a huge reduction in risk. Now, all these increases in efficiencies and savings are great, but what is our vision here? Well, we are starting today by creating high-end software tools for some of the best aerospace companies in the world. Tomorrow, we want to expand to aerospace, energy, and mechatronics. But ultimately, what we want to do is to democratize this technology and make it available to small teams, students, and the open source community to enable them to deal with the same level of complexity that today is the exclusive power view of government agencies and huge corporations. Our vision is a world where engineers can navigate the complexity of their systems with the same ease that we navigate the web today, where a small team that is designing a delivery drone or an industrial robot can leverage the best technologies in avionics and computational fluid dynamics from the likes of Boeing and MIT, with the same ease that today we use TensorFlow and OpenAI libraries. And hopefully along the way, we're also gonna get that sweet flying car. So this is Perpetual Labs. Are you going to be on board? Pliable are the second forward partner's portfolio company to join the ATR Boeing Accelerator's first cohort. There's a huge amount of experience across the four co-founders and the wider team, and we've really enjoyed working with Martin and the rest of the Pliable business over the course of the first program. They're building a really cool and very rapidly scaling product that's revolutionizing how composite parts and tools are made, 
and they're already used across a number of different sectors, including aerospace. Here's Martin, co-founder and CEO, to share more. Hello, my name is Martin Norton. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Pliable. The traditional supply chain model, where a handful of countries produce more than 50% of manufacturing output, is over. It's not resilient enough to cope with the modern world. The future is distributed manufacturing, enabled by advanced digital technologies. Our focus at Pliable is composites. These lightweight materials used to be only for the military or Formula One. Now, lightweight components are critical to all transportation sectors and none more so than aerospace. Our goal is to increase the proliferation of composites. We envision democratised access, enabled by Industry 4.0, and with that, a much broader market, including applications that we are only beginning to conceive. Aerospace companies produce astounding innovations every day, self-piloting drones, supersonic aircraft, even rockets. And these can offer the illusion of next generation manufacturing, but the truth is often far different. With engineering and procurement teams, using a set of tools that has barely evolved in over 30 years. Our technology changes this. Recently, we worked with GK and Aerospace and were shown to be 44% faster and 20% cheaper than incumbent suppliers. Even pre-COVID, we knew that was a compelling story. And we always used to say the status quo was our biggest barrier. That status quo no longer exists. From an engineering perspective, when you're in the prototyping and ideation stages, time is everything. It's the way you stay ahead of the curve and beat your competition. It's the deciding factor for whether or not your product makes it to production. So even a one or two day loss matters significantly. We have created a frictionless B2B e-commerce platform where our automated, smarter design tools and production processes enable more people to invent. As a result, Composites innovation is radically accelerated. We have delivered tools in as little as 24 hours. And what's more, we've done so without owning any machines. Over the past 18 months, we have slowly built up our own trusted and verified network of manufacturing partners all around the world. We are now the world's largest online manufacturing platform for composites. Digital manufacturing benefits enterprise companies. Results are better, more consistent, and production is less risky. It's easier to match the right factory every time. Engineering teams can use self-service tools, real-time access to information, and a digital thread from design right through to production. Purchasing teams benefit from a fast, digital-first user experience, better communication, and a true market-driven price. We always back the shift to a more e-commerce model for B2B. We felt it was inevitable. That process just got fast forwarded by 18 months. If you're interested in hearing more, please do get in touch. Thank you. So that's a brief overview from nine of the fantastic founders who took part in the cohort one. This video is going to stay up in our YouTube channel in case there's anything that you've missed. If any of the nine pictures have sparked your imagination or have made you think of an idea to collaborate with us or any of the teams you've worked with, please do get in touch. We're keen to hear from you. Next, we'll be hearing more from our programme partners. We'll hear from Brian Shetler from Boeing Horizon X, Paul Pereira from GKN Aerospace and finally Gary Elliott from the ATI. Hey everyone, my name is Brian Shetler and I lead Boeing Horizon X. I just wanted to first say thanks to the nine startups for their dedication through the entire program. Even through a pandemic, they were incredibly focused on getting the most out of the program and we're just really pleased with their commitment and growth in these challenging times. It's also been great to see them highlight their cutting edge technology that they've created for aerospace and I'm just so pleased they participated in the Boeing ATI Accelerator. Now, broadly speaking, our accelerators provide an opportunity for key industry players to connect with a new technology that's being built and new innovation systems in a particular geographical region. And there's incredible interest in these kind of programs. As Gabby mentioned, 
The program, this program alone stimulated over 268 applicants across 37 countries. So through our accelerator program, Horizon X gives early stage startups the tools and resources they need to succeed. That could include mentoring, best practices, connection to other startups, investors, and other industry stakeholders. Our program tries to provide opportunities for these companies to mature their product roadmaps, you know, informed by experts in industry, as well as learning how to navigate the complicated venture capital world, leveraging our team of investment professionals. Now, certainly none of this would be successful without partner collaboration. And you know, what I witnessed in this program was exceptional, especially the government industry collaboration. So I wanted to specifically call out the role UK government has played in this effort, specifically Roger Bourne and his team at Bayes, and the support we received in January when industry and business minister Nadim Zahawi officially launched the accelerator. So thank you all for the partnership. Now on the industry side, this has been a true collaboration across Boeing. And so the Horizon X team has worked closely with our Boeing colleagues around the world. And I just wanna give my sincere thanks to everyone on the Boeing team that helped make this program a reality and a success. And we're certainly grateful for GK and Aerospace joining the team and the support they provided and our other aerospace colleagues across industry. And we're already starting to see tangible outcomes from the program, including Authentize. They're providing execution software for Boeing additive manufacturing and Anomalous informing our strategy for applying machine learning for quality inspection applications. So this accelerator is a great example of what Boeing aims to do in this space. We try to partner with people and teams to really bring a different mindset to the table and try to bring the innovation that's happening outside inside to Boeing and help develop and stimulate innovation ecosystems around the world. Now, Horizon X was originally founded to challenge the boundaries of innovation, you know, how we bring that outside in and, you know, what we were responding to in a changing world. What we saw was, you know, the innovation happening to a much greater degree and a much faster pace outside our industry boundaries than ever before. So with Horizon X, we try to bring that outside innovation into Boeing to deliver solutions for real world problems by collaborating across our company and with industry partners around the globe but with close working relationships and embracing that with startups around the world. Now we do this by evaluating you know, global trends, customer pain points, um, assessing markets and investing in startups around the world discreetly. And we partner outside our industry to learn and approach markets in new ways. So as you can see, a program like this accelerator and the startups like those that participated, you know, they're vital to who we are and what we do. Now you've heard from the startups themselves, these companies are examples of the incredible innovation you know, we seek in our accelerator programs and, and also highlights the talent that exists in the UK startup community, even in difficult times, because this is challenging times for all of us during the COVID pandemic, you know, especially those in the startup world. But what I found you know, is the startup community to be incredibly resilient. And I have a renewed appreciation for um, community and partnership as we navigate you know, this uncharted territory together. We come together you know, as we face challenges that we've never faced before and share you know, guidance, resources, and support with each other. And that partnership won't stop when the pandemic ends. You know, we're dedicated to finding you know, ways to continue engaging external innovation to support our global efforts and you know, especially continuing our partnership with, with the UK. Um, now more than ever, it's important for investors to continue investing in aerospace. You know, given the challenges of COVID, innovation will be more critical than ever. Um, the value of safe, uh, sustainable aerospace industry remains unchanged and returning the industry till its full operations will require wide collaboration. You know, from the early stage ingenuity we see to new and improved uh, operations from OEMs and, and airlines. So we look forward to working with our global partners uh, more in the future uh, yeah, than ever. And we work together to strengthen that aerospace startup ecosystem. Um, so thank you again to the startups, the UK government, uh, ATI, GKN, Ignite, and all the individuals that work tirelessly to make for a successful program. Thanks again, take care and stay well. Hi, I'm Paul Pereira. I am the VP for technology in GKN Aerospace and uh, look after innovation as well for my um, duties inside the ATI Boeing Accelerator. I've been one of the mentors and support to the team um, and obviously all the cohort of the nine startup companies. I guess the purpose that we have as a company, GKN Aerospace, supplies the likes of Boeing and Airbus and Rolls-Royce 
G and um, Pratt and Whitney, amongst others. And we're really part of the supply chain. So we really understand the challenges of small companies beginning to enter into aerospace and trying to navigate their way through, um, particularly with new technology. And one of the things we're keen to do is to use our open innovation approach. And in GKM, we have four global technology centers with ecosystems around each of them. In the UK, we're just completing our final uh, installation of the Global Technology Centre, partnered with uh, ATI to build a really collaborative environment for startups to work with us and universities and bring their technologies in, in particular around Industry 4 and sustainability. Those two goals that we set for the Cohort 1 are really right at the centre of GKN's vision for building a future of flight. One that's sustainable, safe, um, with the pandemic in mind, being that broader sustainability, including the economic sustainability of our supply chain. And the partnering we've got with the ATI and Boeing exemplifies the kind of work that we want to do in the future. So what have we been doing? We've been working with those nine startups, helping mentor them. We've assigned key individuals in our company who can help them define their business plan, their goals, stretch their targets, accelerate them through the learning how to enter the market, how to position the market, how to deliver it with a, a product that really can meet the needs and a proof of concept, leading to a demo day which will um, produce a number of case studies that they can then take on to their next step in their um, next vision for their, for their future. What we've identified for all nine of them is a real sense of purpose around how they can operate and why they should be in the aerospace market. That why question really key to each of them and each of them in turn has really come back to a sense of purpose we can all understand and adopt and build upon in our vision. So that's the really key thing that I've seen amongst that. We've created some real opportunities for each of them. And I could just talk about four, which I'm really excited by, and then maybe we could come back and think about where do we go next? So the next thing we, we, we did was once we uh, took the 800 odd companies that applied down to the nine, which was a really tough task, was really kind of nurture the thinking inside those companies, not try and constrain their thoughts about where they wanted to go in the accelerator, but to learn from them what they really needed. Um, so we had four companies in particular that I really took uh, under my wing and began to shine with uh, the founders. I think we took Authentize, Andre Wagner was working on the AM manufacturing execution system that could connect us between our customers and our suppliers to make sure that the digital data was secure and able to re respond really quickly and take the lead time down for setting up additive manufacturing in aerospace, a key thing that could bring value to both our clients and also our supply chain, in particular looking towards connecting up Boeing and ourselves and making real advantage out of this proof of concept was our next step. And with Andre, we've been able to build a little proof of concept and we're continuing that journey as we enter our new global technology center here in the UK. And that will connect with our US technology center out in Oak Ridge National Laboratories, where we're building additive manufacturing there too, and also in Sweden. Um, so we have a great opportunity to leverage uh, the capabilities of Authentize around the world, and we'll be doing that with them. Uh, with Intelligence, a little company out of Cambridge, set up by Ben and uh, Gareth from Cambridge University, a professor there. We've been looking at sparse data and the application of AI in that sparse data particularly using it for drug discovery and currently under the COVID crisis, being looking at how to create new drugs and respond to the, the crisis. We used them in another way, which was to find a way to build a new alloy, an alloy that would provide us heat characteristics and heat thermal characteristics that we wouldn't have seen by any other alloy. But we gave them a lot of data, with sparse data in some respects, but that was enough for Gareth and the team to bring back in intelligence a new alloy that gave us properties that we wouldn't have seen before. We're now building that alloy as our next step, which really will then give us confidence to go after a new qualification path for that, and particularly with additive manufacturing in mind for heat exchangers, uh, build something that's truly game-changing. The third proof of concept that we've been working on, uh, it actually happened in the middle of the COVID crisis, and we worked with the team that was uh, then anomalous, and uh, the team of Ewan and Matt, were really capable people who jumped in at a moment's notice, worked with me in Boeing, and uh, and thanks to the Boeing team for supporting Anomalous through the journey. We've created a quality management inspection tool for the Ventilator Challenge UK. And we were able to identify that the bill of materials of over 800 parts are using an AI-based machine visioning app on a phone. And that was able to identify rogue parts that were entering the um, 
the cross dock with Rolls Royce doing the um, procurement, but DHL taking on the quality inspection role when they'd never actually dealt with those parts before. It was a really interesting opportunity to see how the technology could work. And those teams together worked over a basically Easter weekend and brought to us a new program um, and matured that to a level of confidence that we could take forward. And a real good learning experience, but also a lot of hard work. So thanks to the team for that. And then the third and so the fourth and final uh, I'll talk about is the work that we've been doing with Pliable and Martin and his team. Very exciting opportunity for GK and particularly with the advancement of uh, rapid prototyping tooling and being able to go and source that really quickly and affordably within a much wider network and using an AI algorithm that helps build from the part that's the final part, a set of tools that uh, created using AI, um, an artificial intelligence tool, um, providing us a quote system and also a confidence in delivery, which really is amazing in these particular times. And with the COVID crisis, I know Martin's been helping us out on a number of little challenges that we've been putting his way for the NHS. And thank you for all that you've been doing there. And as you can see, a sense of purpose behind each of them, bringing their value to the table, not just for us, but also our supply chain. And I think that what we're also wanting to do is to spread the word that you too could be part of this. If you want to be a startup and uh, thinking about entering into the aerospace market, now's a great time. Even though we've had this crisis around us, we need that innovation, that openness of approach in the supply chain. And we're really one of those companies that's harnessing that. I think if you ask any one of our uh, cohort that we've been working with, that GKN Aerospace has been at the heart of some of their thinking of advancing themselves and using that as a springboard to work with uh, other companies in the industry. So take your chances and come and join us on cohort two. And we look forward to seeing GKN part of building a sustainable and innovative industry four type solution. In particular, I'm talking about sustainability because one of our goals in the future is to look towards energy and energy management in GKN and also with our partners across the industry. It will be a key theme and thanks to the work that Circular has been doing, we can really see how we can bring a much more sustainable supply chain to our market going forward. I'll tell you more about that another time. But thank you for your attention and look forward to working with Brian and Gary and the rest of the ATI Accelerator all again for the next round. And uh, thank you and have a great farm. Hello, everyone. The final few words fall to me today. And for those of you who don't know me, I am Gary Elliott, Chief Executive of the Aerospace Technology Institute. I have been and remain super excited about having an aerospace accelerator in the UK. It's been a long-term plan of mine to establish an accelerator for aerospace, mainly because I see the opportunity to connect more traditional aerospace to the innovation and ideas within startups, to take a different approach to innovation by applying the startup's ideas to the real-world problems in aerospace through proof of concepts, and lastly, to overcome the barriers to entry which often put off startups seeking to enter the world of aerospace. The strength of the program we have established is in the independence and objectivity of the ATI, combined with the strength of our sponsors who really want to engage and introduce startups into their businesses, overcoming those barriers to entry. It gives the selected startups credibility and affirmation of their ideas through proof of concept contracts with the sponsors and an interaction with potential investors. As a result, it improves their chances of success, both in their chosen markets, but also in their ability to unlock equity investment for growth. Specifically on COVID-19, it has had an impact on aviation. However, I remain optimistic about the future. I believe people will still want to fly. But as before, sustainability remains the number one priority. And to meet all the challenges we face, we need even more innovation, and particularly that which can be provided by new innovative startups and the ideas they bring. With that optimism, I remain confident we will launch a second cohort of our program later this year, launching the selected startups onto the program itself in 2021. As before, we will be looking for startups with a broad cross-section of ideas to meet some of the technology challenges from our industry sponsors. Key priorities remaining sustainability, passenger safety, and a number of other major themes that we have previously highlighted. As part of the next phase, I am hopeful we can connect even more potential investors and interested parties, particularly across other sectors with similar challenges. Lastly, well done and good luck to Cohort One. You've done a fantastic job and it's been a pleasure to work with you. Thank you to our industry sponsors, Boeing and GKN, for their positive engagement. 
And for those hoping to join our next phase, get ready. Thank you. Stay safe.